All right, everybody, hail and welcome back to another very, very special episode. The first episode of Midgard Musings here in 2021. My name is Jesse, and welcome. Thank you for tuning in and checking out my channel. If this is your first time coming here and things pertaining to Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism, you know, Asatru, Asatru, whatever you want to call it nowadays, uh, if that sort of thing is right up your alley, then please click the subscribe button right down here. And don't forget to ding the bell, uh, the little drop down window that you'll get when you hit that bell. You'll be given the option to select how you want to be notified. And make sure you click that bell notification so you do get alerted whenever I do upload new content on here. It is greatly appreciated and it costs you nothing. All right, folks, like I said, this is a very, very special episode, not just because it's the first episode of 2021 and we can forget about that craziness that happened in 2020. 21 is already kicking off to be a quite a wild year, but I don't want to talk about that. Today, I want to talk about my special guest here on the channel, Matt Petrie from Odin's Beard Woodworking. Matt took some time out of his busy life and schedule to sit down and talk with me and answer some questions and kind of give you a little bit of more of an insight. You and me both, you know, learned a lot of things talking with Matt about the man behind the beard. So I want you guys to take a look at what Matt has to say uh, and stay tuned also to the very end of the video for a very special message from Matt. Also, while you're here, speaking of Odin's Beard Woodworking, if you want to get 5% off your next order from Odin's Beard Woodworking from today until January 17th, 2021. You have until midnight or 11.59 p.m. on January 17th, 2021 to order from odinsbeardwoodworking.com and get 5% off your next order by using the discount code Team Midgard Musings. So be sure to take advantage of this special offer coming at you from Matt over at Odin's Beard Woodworking. Again, that's Team Midgard Musings when you go and order anything on Matt's website between today and and January 17th. You have until 11.59 p.m. January 17th, so be sure to take advantage of that special offer right now. All right, folks, so enough of all that. Thank you so much for listening and watching the intro. Let's see what Matt has to say. The man behind the beard at Odin's Beard Woodworking. Don't forget to stick around to the end of the video for a special message from Matt. Hail, thank you all. Let's get on with the show. Right, here we are, folks, ladies and gentlemen, all over Midgard. Really excited to have Matt Petrie here on the channel from Odin's Beard Woodworking. Matt, would you mind introducing yourself? You're looking pretty good over here. Hey guys, it's Matt. I do Odin's Beard Woodworking. So yeah. The video says, you know, the man behind the mask. So there he is. <laughs> this <laughs> are you? Are you even at your? What is it? Um, this isn't even your final form, right? <laughs> That's just your day outfit. <laughs> so yeah, guys, um, as you heard in the intro, you know, um, Matt Petrie is the, I guess I could say the, the president, founder, and CEO of uh, Odin's Beard Woodworking. You know, he uh, he does amazing work, do which all. I've, <laughs> yeah, do it all, right? You got your uh, god poles and pocket altars and and, and all kinds of hand carved and hand made items um, that accentuate your altar space. I've talked a lot about you and your work, um, but today, hopefully, like you said, with the the, the uh, title of the video being "The Man Behind the Mask," you know, not just myself because I've you know got some questions to ask you, but everybody that's watching uh, gets a little bit uh, or know a little bit more about the man behind the mask. So, um, really appreciate you coming on here and answering some of these questions. So, you know, the first one that I had is, um, what was the inspiration for you to start or, or create Odin's Beard Woodworking? What was the, the brainchild? Honest that? truth, my dad gave me a pocket knife. We came down to visit in 2016. My dad gave me a triple X, actually. Dad gave me this. 
Oh, right. Is that and, an old timer? Yes. No, it's a case triple X. Okay. Pretty much old timer thingies. Yeah. But my dad gave me this, and I carved out a little mill near. And uh, when we got home, I wanted a rune set, so I made a rune set. Then my friends were like, hey, that's cool. I want one. I want one. Then, you know, their friends were, I did like five or six rune sets. Then, you know, people were like, what else can you do? I was like, I don't know. Let's find out. (laughs) So that's pretty much how it started. So it started in 2016 with a pocket knife from your dad. Uh, Does anybody else, like, do, do you come from a line of craftsmen as it were i mean does anybody else in your my grandpa have- always whittled out stuff he uh, that's the reason my dad gave me one of these because my grandpa always had a case knife on him always whittling out sticks he carved ducks and little things like that but yeah so it's cool it's like you're uh, carrying on a legacy almost you know even even yeah. if it wasn't a business or a livelihood for them they it, it's still something that's close and near and dear uh your yeah. family that's great yeah. so have you been you know uh, I, you know everybody that that knows about you and, and follows you a lot of the same people that follow what i do know that your your main focus is you know the the norse gods yeah. and goddesses and things of that nature you will do other other things um, that don't yeah, focus absolutely. on, on <laughs> you know it's almost all kinds like, of like, customs right yeah and so there's there's definitely that, you know, even if people that are watching this right now don't necessarily want a, a, you know, Norse god or goddess or anything like that, you know, hit Matt up and see if he can uh, maybe work with you about a, a custom piece. I don't have anything pre... You actually made one for me. I don't have it with me right now, but you made a, a, a small pocket altar uh, goddess um, yep. for my wife. Uh, I can't remember the name. is like a... the. It's like a Wiccan goddess thing. I can't remember the triple goddess name. lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. Triple goddess. Yeah. <laughs> very first Mjolnir. Yep. That's your first Mjolnir. It's the very first thing I carved. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen that. That's really cool. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. You saw it here. I saw it here first. Matt's very first. Uh, Mjolnir that he carved with his uh, case knife that his dad gave him. So I was curious, Matt. You know, with the focus on Norse gods and goddesses, have you been pract- Have you been a practicing, <laughs> a practicing, a practicing <laughs> pagan for your whole life? Yeah, I would say that there was a few years after my grandpa died. I was pretty much an atheist for like five or six years mm-hmm. until I was sixteen, and uh, I was at one of my friends' house and. They were practicing doing their Yule stuff. And, you know, they passed me the horn and I was, you know, uh, Odin. I just had a vision of Odin and he was like, hey, you remember those stories Grandpa used to tell you? Welcome home. Hmm. And, you know, then I was like, oh, yeah, I am this. (laughs) This is me. This is what I do. Huh. I just started doing the Yule stuff, and but when I was five, my grandpa introduced me with it. Did a big ritual. And, yeah, yeah, all that good stuff. So that was my yeah. That was going to kind of be like my follow up question: Is that if you have been pagan your whole life, who was you know the main, uh, you know, driving and like my my uh, grandpa. teacher? Yeah. So, and I've heard you talk about him a lot too. So it's great to hear. Yeah, didn't mean to cut you off, but no, it's we would sit in church and read Thor comics. <laughs> That's why I've got I've got <laughs> hundred Thor comics down here. This is where I'd sit and read them, and we'd be in the back of the church, be reading Thor, be like, oh, well, you know, this is. This isn't right. You know, Thor had red hair and a big bushy beard. I don't know where he got this blonde shit from. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, the uh, the funny thing that I always thought was like the the the, the div- differences and the similarities that Marvel kept. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and when, you know, the Marvel Universe um, 
with like Thor and Odin and Loki. They did and stuff. their research. I mean, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then the the behaviors and the mannerisms, you know, they they reflect very much that uh, things that we hear about in the lore. You know, um, obviously they take poetic license or whatever, and they're not the same figures as they are in the lore. But some of the behaviors and mannerisms I always thought was you know, that they kept kind of close to to those sort, sorts of things. Here's um, a new carving I was doing. Oh, that's awesome. That's beautiful. Somebody just sent me a, it was just a random goddess holding like a marble ball. And they were uh -huh. like, could you do something like this? And I was like, uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah. And that's the beauty of it. You know, uh, everybody that's watching right now too, like the, the stuff that Matt does, like I asked him about um, the, the, the triple goddess thing and he, I, you, I think if I, as I recall, you're like, hold, well, hold on, let me try. And you like yeah. carved it out in like 20 minutes or whatever it was less than that. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that like, <laughs> you yeah. know, so he's, he's definitely got an artistic eye, you know, and I, and I, I think that's really awesome that um, anybody with that sort of talent, you know, people that you can just tell something to, and then they can bring those thoughts to life. They can bring those stories to life almost, you know? Yeah. So I was curious, you know, with you being a pagan your whole life or most of your known life, uh, do you have like your top three most important things um, that you would tell somebody that is about being a pagan, you know, or specifically a Norse pagan, since this is kind of the, 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 the path that we both closely follow? Like, do you have like top three things that are that, the, that are the most important? For me, family is number one. Mm. Just family. That's. But at the same time, there's going to be family that not going to be family, mm. and that's okay. I have my grandpa told me if I ever practiced in the open, ninety percent of his family would disown me. Oh wow! I went home back in 2019. And uh, I went to my grandma, you know, her, his husband, her husband, you know, my grandpa, grandma, and uh, none of my family came to see me, like none of them, because of you know, me being open on Facebook about everything and wow. opening my business, hmm. but it's fine because <laughs> I've it's got part of it sometimes, and you know, it's kind of one of those uh, unfortunate realities that exist you know then faith in your ancestors you gotta have your ancestors even if you hate them you have to have your ancestors like my grandpa was a racist dick but i honor him because he has taught me what i know right so it's a fine line there but Mm -hmm. you got to zigzag through it so family ancestry then you got and and the gods yeah uh i think you you kind of hit the nail on the head because at least for me you know um i've kind of made almost like a, a a flow chart as it were um in my head and, and i've shared a, a an image on, on midgard musings before and it's to me it's you know, the first thing is your hearth, your hearth, your home, your family, um, the, the people who are your inner or in and guard, you know, the inner circle. The next thing that you have that becomes important is clan, which is your, you know, your family, those that aren't in your immediate home. So like, you know, it could be parents, siblings, grandparents, you know, all that type of stuff. And then from there comes tribe. And then from that goes co to community. And it's kind of, there's an order of it. I feel like, you know, yeah. You can't you can't be more interested or more obligated to you know the community if you're uh than you are your family or you can't be more obligated to your you know your 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 tribe than in your own inner circle so there's kind of an order of things and i'm glad to hear that you know one of the most important things for you is is your family um and honoring your ancestors because like you said even even though they may not be some of the best folks you know some of the more unsavory types, um, 
you, we are, you know, they are why we're here. Yeah. You know, it's like, regardless of how great they were, obviously celebrate the greatness, you know, sing the songs of those great ancestors and, and, and keep their memories alive and maybe not say so much about the others, <laughs> but um, regardless, you know, like they are the reasons why we're here. So I'm glad to hear that that's an important part of your practices too. Um, so you did Thank mention, you. yeah, you say so like you did mention how that is a huge thing, you know, when your family doesn't uh, accept what you do as a pagan and they will often shun you or, you know, sometimes even disown you. Um, are there any other things that have been difficult or challenging about being a Norse pagan to you? And then how have you overcome those challenges? You know, besides the, the family thing. When I was 16 and I, you know, I came back to, I kicked out of high school in a millionaire then you know open, openly you know disregarding it was backwoods kentucky they had a prayer circle for school most kids you know you had to be there you wasn't a kid you know you was an outcast right i never went to that thing so i was always outcast goth always wore black i had, had long hair down down in my ass, I <laughs> liked up. <laughs> so you definitely didn't fit into the the, uh, the demographic Bible. of the area. Yeah. No. You think that that was uh, something that helped kind of shape you into the person you are now, or even the pagan that you are now? I think what did that? We didn't get running water till '97. We lived off the land. We went to town once a month grew everything. We had livestock. We killed a chicken. Yeah. Every time we wanted chicken, my grandma would go, hey, chicky, 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 with a handful of corn. And the first one to come up there, reached down, grabbed it, gave it a three or four just swings, popped it off, and our job was to catch it. <laughs> they would literally just, just run all around. All muscles would twitch, and they would take off running. Oh, wow. So we would have to run down the chickens bring it and dip it in the boiling water and sit there and pluck the feathers off of it. Hmm. Well, that was fun. <laughs> we got corn and potatoes straight out of the garden. It's You got what you wanted to cook. If you wanted corn or something, you would go out, grab it, and bring it in, and Mama would cook it for you. Yeah. <laughs> if you wanted taters, you'd have to go dig them. If you wanted corn, you wanted green beans, you had to go get it yourself. Go out and get it, yeah. That's wholesome, you know, that's, that's, and I mean, you're like what, in your 30s, I'm guessing? I'll be 32 this year. Yeah, and I mean, I'm, I, I just turned 36 back in November, you know, and I didn't <laughs> quite have, November. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, we're like a week or two apart, I think, yep. um, our birthdays, and although I didn't have the same kind of experience that, that you're talking about with you know, but I did, I worked on a farm for over a decade Yeah. and everybody I knew, including my parents had gardens, you know, um, family down the road had chickens. And then the farm that I worked on raised beef cattle. And, um, and we had 200 acres. We had a slaughterhouse. We, yeah. we had cows, horses, chicken, ducks, turkeys, guineas, everything, goat, man, we didn't have the yard because we just have free range goats <laughs> yeah they took care of all that yeah but that's such good stuff to, to to live and experience i think um you know because when i was like as i as, as i've grown as a heathen and as i've learned a lot of things and, and realized just how simple and how a lot of what i was doing and living uh growing up even though the the uh religious parts of it were, were, were totally not following a heathen view of things um, it was all very much the way our ancestors had lived, you know, yeah. cultivating your own things, making your own things, not being so reliant on, you know, the world around you. So I like trading now. Yes. Bartering the barter system, man. Like yep. I can't tell you how many times that, um, you know, people we knew, um, you know, whether it was for goods or services, mostly, you know, um, you needed them to do something, and uh, 
you know, it was more valuable to barter another service, you know, okay, you do this for me and I'll do that for you. And everybody wins in the end, you know? I know I made a post asking some of my friends who, uh, they wanted to trade some carbon for some wall art for the living room and stuff. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to be trading for a painting from one of my friends' grandma. That's awesome. Pretty excited about that. I'm really, I'm, I'm excited for you, you know. Um, one thing I wanted to also talk about, you know, in addition to, we've mentioned, you know, what you do with Odin's Beard Woodworking and the amazing craftsmanship that, you know, you display. Another thing that I wanted to talk about was the online group on Facebook called Airs Embrace. Yeah. Um, so I guess before I ask the question, could you just kind of give a, a background of, of what Airs Embrace is? Um, um, it is a mental health, you know, just online group for anyone suffering from, you know, PTSD, depression, anxiety, bipolar, you know, just any mental health issues, addiction. Uh, it's a safe space for us to get together and hang out and talk. You know, I make my daily reminders to, you know, take your medicine, take a shower, eat a full meal, remind you you're not alone that, you know, tomorrow yeah. would not be the same without you. Yeah, and it really has become, so thank you for, you know, elaborating a little bit. I'm sure most everybody that watches what I do is aware of it, but there's going to be plenty of people, I'm sure, that haven't become aware of it. So it has really taken off, I think, um, and it's become, like you said, a safe space for, for many people suffering from a lot of different, you know, things, like you said. Um, but I'm curious, you know, what inspired you to do that? Why that specific type of, of support group? Why, you know, what do you, what kind of brought you to that? And then what do you hope to, or you know, where do you hope to see it go? Or what do you hope to see it become since its inception and where it is now to where you want it to be? Um, well, I have PTSD and depression, and anxiety and stuff. And, uh, I normally do a bunch of live video carvings. I'm going to be starting that here probably next week. I've got a desk coming and I'll be setting up my big computer and actual setup and starting my live streams back again. But, you know, I, you know, midnight carvings and people were just talking and I was like, Hey guys, you know, I've got this, you know, feel free to talk to me. And they were like, Hey, why don't you, we'd make a group or something and I was like sure why not what are we going to call it so then I did a poll you know like hey guys what do we want to call our mental health group and somebody was like ears embrace and then somebody else was like uh, a heathen's headspace and so it you know, kind of combined those two to you know, ears embrace a heathen's headspace mm. I think it's great to have something like that you know um so many different people uh I found um, a lot of benefit from it, you know, and despite the, the struggles and despite the things that, you know, we all go through, um, you've kind of been that constant thing of a reminder. And I see a lot of it. I don't, I'm yeah. in that group and I don't, um, always comment or, or, you know, yeah. engage that. No, I, know. I see all the, I see all the lot things. Of lurkers. That, and, and there's a lot of so you know, so many I see people's responses, you know, to your posts and things about thanks for the reminder, you know, I needed that today and whatnot. And it seems like the value to what you've done has really um, continued to to uh, to become something, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm proud of it. I uh, I've been trying to get the 501k nonprofit to make it an actual nonprofit so we can donations. Yeah, because I want to be able. To, the biggest problem we have in Ears Embrace is people not being able to afford therapy and their medicine. So I want to be able to take donations and be able to give somebody an hour's worth of therapy so you know, the therapist can be like, okay, you need to talk to this doctor about this and you know, try to get on this and this and help them get where they need to be. Yeah. Like the first hour or the intro or whatever to see if we can get their insurance. That's an amazing goal, and I hope you get it. Um, so everybody, you know, that's watching down in the description, you're going to see all of Matt's links, including um, the link to Airs Embrace, a Heathen 
headspace on, on Facebook. No, a lot of people don't, um, believe it yeah. or not, use Facebook. Um, That's the next thing is to get Ears and Braces on the website. Yeah, uh, which is an awesome goal. Um, but for now, <laughs> you know, um, everybody, please uh, head down into the description of the video and check out um, what you can there. And sounds like you've got really, uh, you know, aspiring uh, ambitions and things to do with, with regards to this and actually making it something um, yeah. even better than what it already is. You know? Yeah. I think that's great. So congratulations. Um, a few more questions for you. The, uh, <laughs> the one thing that I think we all notice in the heathen circles or these pagan groups or whatever is this like, I call them brosatru. Um, I was going to ask, these... what, what is that? That's one <laughs> so of those it's like, I'm not really familiar with it. Yeah, so like <laughs> it's, it's like this hyper-masculine, I'm a Viking, you know, so I like, I take that word. And, I, and I'm not, people. <laughs> I'm not like always, I'm not the one that, that coined the term brosatru, but you know, osatru, osatru, it's, it's a term that's used for the modern day Norse pagan kind of deal. And I just, you know, I see this term brosatru, it's like these bro types, you know, they're like these meathead just super hyper masculine types and and they're all about like I'm an Ufidnar or I'm a berserker or I'm the you know I'm a real Viking and I'm all this. What's your I don't know like how do you respond to that for sort of thing to begin with like when you see it like is I that just always kind of with those people I'm always like why would you want to go to Bahala? That's where the <laughs> second best go. <laughs> it is kind of like wait what? I'm like yeah Freya gets first pick. And then, you know, you have to die on the battlefield. So what battles are you fighting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, dad, I've had my own videos on, on the subject, um, you know, when it comes yeah, to... I, I love your videos. <laughs> and I think, Thank you very much, by the way. Um, but I I've... I've... That car late at night. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I'm glad that um, my content can be enjoyed by... You know, I keep things family friendly and that it's enjoyed by so many people doing so many, you know, different things. But yeah, uh, that's funny that you say it where it's like um, that, that uh, you know, Valhalla is like it's, it's for the second best because it is. It's so over romanticized and overhyped. Like, yeah, that's where you want to go. And I'm like, have you read the lore? Do you even, you know, sure, go, and then go I, die every day, <laughs> you know, like if that's what you want to believe and that's what you want to think, like that's where you like doesn't seem to me like it's a uh but i get it you know it it it, it falls into the uh they watch very too much games yeah yeah there's that and then it, it, i think it came up in um one of my videos where it's like i get it because the the the, the warrior cult was a very niche kind of society back in the you know old times and whatever not everybody not, had access not everybody to was and shield. Warrior, though. no no, most of them were like, you know, folks like you. They were farmers, farmers and traders. Yep. Exactly. But, you know, we got to fight. We got to fight. No, you don't have to fight. Sit down and talk about it. Let's do that. <laughs> have you had your water today? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know I have. I'm, I'm, I'm always, you know, between coffee, water, and uh, scotch, I think I stay pretty well regular. Yeah. Very first Odin. Like the very first carving ever. That is cool. So that we all got to see Matt's first Mjolnir that he carved and his first Odin. The first age thing from 2018. This is my Odin. And here's 2019. Then the last thing of 2020, first thing of 2021, it is not. Wow. I love the Othala rune up there. I was watching your video and Wyatt, mm -hmm. he mentioned I should carve an Odin with the rune above it. And I was like, well, I can't really do that, but I bet I could throw one over his eye. So I, I really like this watching you. <laughs> Dude, that's so cool. I've Here's got... The, uh, when you go live, I'm normally watching you carve because 
I do act hard. That's great. Yeah, I even brought um, one of my one of my favorite pieces that you've done. So I'm gonna Boy. try to get him up. Yeah, there's Thor, big big brother Thor. I've actually stopped doing the seven to eight inch and only doing them on commission now because they take so long. Yeah. But these are like, I love the size of them and I will gladly commission you for, for more. Who's that? Oh, Hangdall, I'm guessing. Yep. It's Hangdall. Standing on the Bifrost. Now, I want to call attention to the fact that while you're showing that, um, all of like the armor that, um, you know, like, in, and even on like when I show Thor here, like those little, it'll focus. Gotta get There's out of the 490 floor. something on the back of yours. <laughs> These are all like hand poked, guys. Like, there's no stamp, there's no machine that's doing this. This is Matt going in there with his tools and, um, this, this yeah. Here's here's how I make the armor. Just little. Little pokes. Hundreds of little pokes. <laughs> this sit here for an hour. Poke, poke. Poke, poke, poke. Wow. You know, so guys, like, that's the thing. When when Matt says he, you know, these are handmade, hand carved, there's literally no power tools that come in, in contact with these things. And that's why they take as long as they do. That's why they look so good. It's because these, like, my Thor doesn't look the same as any other Thor that, that Matt's done. They are all unique. You know, all all individually crafted. So your piece that you get is going to be unique and special, and there's not going to be another one like it. There may be similarities or, or you know, things that are kind of close. Cannot make the same cut twice. Exactly. So I do want to make sure that everybody knows that as you are, you know, thinking of supporting a a, a business, a local business, and a heathen business, that you're understanding that, you know. You can't get anything like what Matt is is providing on a on a on a on Amazon or on a mass produced website or anything like that, you know. So definitely check them out. Well, here's I have tubs full of last week's work. So here's here's two Odin doors. <laughs> Odin Sun door. And there you go, right? It's you guys saw two Thors carved at the same time. Well, who were those? Odin. Two Odins. But you guys see how unique and different they are? They're all carved in the same week or the same time frame, but neither one of them look the same. Very These unique. are more, more the same-ish. But they're different. Mm -hmm. Freya. Love it. What is uh, one of your favorite Norse myths, Matt? Oh, the one my grandpa always told was Odin's eye, the sacrifice of Odin's eye. Oh, yeah. At Mimir's well. I love that's the one my grandpa always told growing up. He would always draw Odin hanging on my when I was going to would tell it and he would draw like the exodil up my back and like ring and write the rooms going down into the well. And uh I have a I drew it from you know the way he drew it on my back and then I carved it out one night. Wow. Like, And when you say like drew it on your back, do you do, with his finger? Just, so okay, that's what that's like what I was, was gonna like ask. Rubbing my back, but he was like, 
trying to get me to go to sleep. So there was no image for you to draw that picture from except what was in your mind. Yeah, me and my buddy Eric, we were uh we were uh I guess we were drinking and uh we were just talking. That was the last thing I made when I was drunk. And uh, you know, we were we got shit faced drunk and you know, I started crying telling him the story about it and he was like, dude draw it out draw it out right now so i drew it out on a little piece of paper and then i was like i wonder if i could carve that and he goes fuck yeah you can <laughs> grab the piece of board and i just dug into it i drunk off my ass i carved that no kidding slicing my finger pretty good <laughs> oh wow Wow, that's an interesting story. I mean, I've seen that plaque, that carving, and and have heard your rendition of that story. I guess, as you said, it's that was told to you um, by your grandfather in the same way or the same story. Um, but those details, you know, those are those are those are some really interesting yeah. details that I've never heard before, and probably most everybody watching this hadn't heard either. So thank you for. Oh, you caught some of my old live videos. I told that story a couple of times. Yeah. It's one of my better stories. Huh. Yeah, it is. It's it's a tremendous story. So yeah. two years uh, sober now. Well, congratulations. You don't have to drink. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Right. You're an that's, inspiration, Matt. That's the other thing that aggravates me about the newcomers, you know, drinking horns. Yes, you can drink water out of them. They do not have to have alcohol in them. Most no, of the ancestors had to drink at a mead hall. They did not have mead in their home mm -hmm. unless they made it themselves and it was a week old wine. <laughs> right. Yeah, because I mean, you got to think, you know, the time that it took to, to make it and then um, just the cost of it, you know what I mean? Did it, did yeah. it keep you alive in the, in the leaner times? Did it, did it, you know, keep you hydrated, did it keep you full? No, it was, it was, it was, you know, for, for parties and it was for, for mirthful times, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the, the, the working class, the poor, the farmers, the, all that stuff, they didn't have the time to, to be wasting with all that. If they, you know, they needed to stay alive. So um, the opportunities that presented themselves, whether it be for feasts or for, you know, Is times it, like Yule or whatever, where there was copious amounts. Talking of, to you, that's uh I found out my grandpa liked to party a lot because we were <laughs> celebrating a bunch of stuff just so he could get drunk. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, it's, you know, like you say, the, 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 oh, I got to get a, I got to get a, a, a drinking horn. I got to get a, you know, an, a spear. I got to get an ax. I got to get a sword. I got to get all these things because it's Viking and it's, you know, that's what the heathens did. Yeah. No. Oh, not really. I mean, if you if you want to get down to it, and you, you ought to move out into a hut somewhere and grow and kill your own food and drink, and and then um, that's what the Vikings did. You know, that's what the <laughs> the real people of Scandinavia. That's how they lived. You know, and then seasonally, maybe went off on raids if they had, had the means or a boat. Yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff. That's another thing that people are forgetting. You know, only the rich did stuff. Most farmers and stuff they stayed where they were at. Yep. took care of their homes and their families that way the rich went off exploring and pillaging and whatnot yeah the real life stuff is is you know in the hearth and oh home. running water till 97 <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's the real deal that nobody wants to talk about you know you ain't ready for this conversation no running water i i was you know i I've I've grown up around people that didn't have running water, but I was never one of them, you know. Just be, you know, the, the where I grew up and everything like that. But then I talk to people from my generation, like you, and they're like, "Yeah, didn't have running water until '97." I'm like, I "Was 16, you know, or whatever." I was like learning how to drive, and you, you know, like, wow, it puts, puts things into perspective. It really does. Dude, I after my grandpa died, my mom just kind of up and moved. We moved into an apartment. I went from 
grass, bare feet to having to wear shoes because of concrete going to school. Yeah. My world got completely turned upside down. Wow. I can imagine. Uh, the last question actually that I had for you was um, so many people nowadays, and I, I, I incorporate this into my uh, podcast that I have every, you know, so many days uh, throughout the week, but um, the Hovamal, you know, everybody loves to read stanzas from the Hovamal. There's a lot of inspiring words and, and, uh, and stuff that uh, people like to you know, draw their yeah. daily inspiration from or whatever. Post them on the business page every now and then. This yep. Right up. Second. So I was going to ask you, you know, do, is do you have a favorite stanza from the hall? I do. I don't know the numbers or anything because I, my wife just wrote it down and I just copied and pasted it. The the lame man rides a horse. The handless man drives a herd. The deaf man fights and succeeds. The blind. Is bet to be blind is to be better than to be burnt. A corpse is no use to anyone. So that's you know basically saying the dis this disabled still mattered. Oh yeah. I uh I remember reading that stanza from the Hava Mall, and I included it on a podcast episode. Um. And I want to say it's like um, I'm looking at the, a, a, a translation of the Hovamol right now, uh, and it's stanza 71. 71. So 71, 72, depending. I think on maybe the, um, right. yeah, the translation because sometimes the numbering gets a bit off. But in this version, which I think is close to kind of yeah, what see. you're saying, is a limping man can ride a horse, a handless man can herd, a deaf man can fight and win. It's better even to be blind than fuel for the funeral pyre. What yep. can a dead man do? Yeah. So, so that was stanza 71 from, that was the Jackson Crawford translation, uh, you know, so, but yeah, um, I like that one a lot too, because it does, it, it reminds us all that we all have a purpose. You know, it's better to be here than to not, Yeah. because what can the dead do, you know? Like tomorrow would not be the same without you. Yes. Yeah. I go to saying, I say it a lot. <laughs> you do, especially in all of your, um, you know, whether it's a, a, a photo post on your page or a Hey You video, um, which, you know, guys, if you're not familiar, you've posted a lot of them on your page, your Odin's Beard Woodworking page. And I want to say you've also done some from your personal account in the yeah. Raising Grace, right? Yeah, and there's a brace. A um, few on YouTube. Yep. I do have a YouTube channel. I keep, I'm getting that stuff hard this year. I've got, we got our place. I've got my own room and I've got a computer desk on its way. It'll be here next week. And somebody gave me a computer. So I've got a nice desktop computer. It's an all in one thing that's run what it needs, what I need to do to be able to stream more and. I've got the kids down and a routine since we moved. It's, I think we're going to be okay here. <laughs> I think so too, man. You know, you've made a lot of changes and a lot of um, big moves. Um, despite the challenges and despite the, the crazy world that we all had um, been in, living in, you know, for the last almost year now. And uh, I think it's a great, you know, just kind of following your journey, watching things happen with you and for you, you know, life can get you down and life can be a real drag sometimes um, in different ways for different people. But um, I think sure. it's, I think, you know, if you keep, keep your head up and keep doing what you're doing, I think uh, great things, great things have already started to happen. You know what I mean? Um, you got, you know, you got your own place, you know, and uh, you know, you're out of a, a situation that was causing a lot of the problems or a lot of the stress maybe for your right. life. And, I'm glad to see that happening and it's you know it's inspiration for me and i think a lot of people because it's like well man if matt can you know make things happen with the seemingly insurmountable odds that he faces or whatever then so can i you know or that's 
that's why I'm always posting my stuff too, is to remind you, you know, you're not alone. If I can do it, you know, from this my sobriety, if I can do it, you can do it. And you know, I offer my hand to help people. Yeah. I really hope people take notice and, you know, find some 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 good in it because there there's a lot to be had. So that that really kind of wraps it up for me as far as the questions go. But as with all of my, you know, friends and guests that come on here, especially for somebody like you that has, you know, a lot to offer, it's kind of like now's the time as we wrap it up to kind of, as I like to say, roll out the red carpet and say, all right, Matt, you know, what's, what do you want to tell people? Where can people find you? Of course, all the information is going to be down in the description, but kind of just let people know what you're up to and, and where they can, uh, you know, find you at. Um, before we get into that, I want to do a uh, quote, sir. Anthony yeah. Hopkins, I think you quoted it too, you know, be bold, be bold, mighty forces will come to your aid. So, yes, be bold. Don't be afraid to be bold. It's, it's good advice. It is, you know, and it's hard sometimes, you know, because we think that we're so, uh, you know, things are, uh, you know, the odds are against us, you know, whatever sometimes, but you, you said it right. And that was something I found shared in your group too was yeah sir anthony hopkins he's you know the man's whatever years old now 70s 80s or whatever and he um is also sober yeah you know, he was going down a, a self-destructive path years ago and that was what he said yeah be bold and, and mighty forces will come to your aid and the mighty forces that we have as heathens are uh, you know our generations of ancestors and the gods yeah. you know what i mean like we've got so much going for us <laughs> I, I do and I have some of my PTSD stuff I'll sit and I'll hold this I got a chair back here I'll hold this and I'll hold that picture of Thor and I'll just sit here and rock back and forth sometimes and you know we can kind of fight through this no, guys you're not alone you are not alone we are here. We are in this together. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Matt, um, for joining me today. Everybody, again, please head down into the description of the video and check out all of the links that are going to be down there for everywhere that you can find Matt on, you know, Facebook, um, his website, Coast Beard Woodworking, um, the Twitter. group. YouTube channel. Patreon. I'll be working on Patreon. That's right. You do have that. So yeah, all of that stuff's going to be down there, guys. So please. <laughs> we got Twitter now too. I think you got. I mean, you I, got I've been on Twitter things. forever. It's just <laughs> don't know how to tweet. I know it's a. Uh, I I do stuff so on weird. that platform, and it's it's. If it helps, I don't know, but Shield Wall. Yeah. So guys, um, that about wraps it up for today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, and check Matt out everywhere that is going to be down in the description of the video. So Matt, thanks for joining me today. Um, and to everybody that's watching, hail and uh, see you in the next video. Bye, everyone. Later. Hey, you. Yes, you. Thank you for watching. I just wanted you to know that we are not alone. No, we're not. We are loved. We do matter. We are worthy. And most importantly, tomorrow would not be the same without us. That is me and you. I love y'all. Y'all have a good day.